How's it going gang? It's a final render here and welcome to the first of what is going to be a very difficult challenge here on the final render channel. Welcome to the first video of our Fallout 76 permadeath run. I've been watching a lot of Fallout challenges recently. I've been watching challenges on Fallout 3. I've been watching challenge runs on Fallout 4. I've been watching challenge runs on New Vegas and you know what? I think I want a piece of that perfectly preserved challenge run pie and we are going to try to beat either the main story of Fallout 76 or the Wastelander campaign with only one character and only one life. If this character dies then we have to start the entire game again from scratch. This is going to be a very difficult challenge however I know a lot about Fallout 76 and also I have planned this quite a lot in my head about how this is going to work and I think it might be possible to beat Fallout 76 with only one character. So let's just get into it. Let's go to the character creation menu and let's get started. Wish me luck, everyone. Here we go then, people. Everyone say hello to Perma. Perma is going to be the first of, well, hopefully just the first character we have in this Perma death run. If Perma dies, we have to make a brand new character and start from scratch. Let's get like a funny, worried expression for her kind of card. There we go, looks terrified. <laughs> let's start the challenge run. So let's talk a little bit about some of the rules of this challenge run and also talk about why I think this is gonna be a very difficult challenge. So initially, I was thinking about maybe restarting that Fallout 4 survival playthrough and stuff like that to do kind of like a permadeath on that. But I thought, you know what, let's just leave that as it is. Let's try something completely new. There's really not that many permadeath attempts of Fallout 76 on the internet. There's only a, a very small handful of people have tried it, and I'm going to be one of them. But something which makes this much more difficult compared to other Fallout games is that it takes much longer to get good in this game. In this game, you start off with one special stat in all categories. So therefore, you have essentially got 10 special points with one each in every single slot. However, in something like Fallout 4, You've got a lot of points to assign immediately, and you can, in theory, leave the vault in Fallout 4, or maybe just do like one or two levels up and have a Blitz sneak build by, say, like maybe level 3 or 4. In New Vegas, after like level 4, you might be able to have a 100 speech character and stuff. Point is, it takes much, much longer to get powerful inside Fallout 76. And also, in Fallout 76, there is quite a lot of combat, so having really good map knowledge about how to avoid combat and sneak around effectively is going to be very, very important, as well as good aim with weapons. And also, there's going to be a little bit of RNG in here because a lot of Fallout 76's meta is based around the legendary weapon system and the legendary armor system. So therefore, getting some really good legendaries early on would be an absolute godsend. Here we go then, people. Here is our very first set of special cards right here. Now, this is going to go back to what I just mentioned, to where you have very few specials. As you can see, we only have one in every special slot. Now, I have kind of planned out my build. I've planned it out, and I think it is totally possible to get a build that will keep us alive until we beat the game. So, first thing we're going to do is get a point into agility, because we're going to be doing a lot of sneaking, and... Sneak is dictated by agility, so we're going to go with that. And also, we're going to pick Action Girl. So let's go and grab that straight away, which gives us Action Point Regen, which will be really good for running away from danger, but also really good for just dealing with enemies with vats. So let's go. I suppose something else which makes this run really interesting as well is that if you actually go into the perk slots and stuff like that, a lot of the really decent perks, they have very high level caps on them, to where you actually can't get them until you have a certain level. For example, certain things that are really good, like Serendipity, you can get a level 5. That's a very good perk. However, things like Light Footed, to where we don't, when we step on mines, it won't trigger them, you don't get that to level 38, which is very extreme. Or things like Sneak, that one of the very basis of this character, you don't get to level 20. So we are going to have to be very careful when doing this run until we get to those levels. But this is going to have a reverse difficulty curve. This game is going to get easier the more we play. It's going to be very hard in the early game, but get easier as we get more powerful. So let's leave the vault and get started. Ah, here we go, out in the forest. Oh, isn't that good? I don't care what anyone says. This game is absolutely beautiful. The fact that you can see all the way to the other end of the map, like that dead center of the screen, that's in the ash heap over there, you know. The draw distance on this game is absolutely bananas. It's fantastic how good this game looks. But you know what? 
We're not going to stay here and look at it. We are going to quit the game. That's right. We are going to quit the game because we actually have to go and play on a private server. Now, I've thought about this quite a lot and I've decided I want to do this run on a private server. There's a few very key reasons as to why I want to play on a private server. Primarily, I don't want other players to be helping me in this run. If I beat this run, I want it to be that I have beaten it. Not that I've got a bunch of level 400s fighting the enemies for me, etc. Because it's true that the Fallout 76 community is exceptionally generous. And they really love helping new players. But I don't want that in this challenge run. Players will happily just drop hundreds of stim packs to brand new players and stuff like that. I've done it and it's great fun to do. But we're not going to be doing that. Okay, so here we go. We have actually got a 38 caliber pistol with four bullets and some buff out. That's actually a really good thing to get early on. I know exactly what I want to use that buff out on. And also we need to run down here and talk to the people who are trying to break into the vault because they will be able to give us another weapon, which is going to be pretty essential in the early game. Here we go then. From these people, you can ask if they have a spare weapon. And they will actually give you a machete. So this is going to be pretty essential in the early game, this machete. Because not only is ammo going to be very low, so therefore we'll definitely want to have a melee weapon. But also, you can mod this machete pretty soon to have a serrated blade. Which means you can actually one-hit a lot of the early game enemies very quickly and easily. So that's ab absolutely fantastic. And we are going to be sneaking everywhere. Get used to me sneaking, people, because you're going to be looking at Perma's butt an awful lot as she sneaks everywhere. Okay, so let's just creep on over to this tower over here, not going on the direct footpath. The direct footpath has liberators on it, and I really don't want to have to start healing this early. We've got to make sure we don't take too much damage. But what we do need to do... Oh, hello. What we do need to do is see if we can get anything dead early because if we can get things dead early then that's xp we can get early i don't think there's a chance of us getting those rad stags is it no not a chance okay not with the sneak attack and we need that if we want to kill them quickly oh, but they are cornered okay we'll, we'll give it a go she's actually cornered in here they're both in here excellent now they can be hostile right that's one thing dead already and let's see if we can give it a power attack there we go and we got ourselves some hide and also some meat. Fantastic. We'll need to manufacture some armor pretty soon. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of just killing critters. A lot of killing innocent bystanders. In order to get our XP up pretty quick. Starting you. with this dude. So sorry matey. You are going to get a yeet in the back. Ooh, that's good. Okay, he shot us. But that's okay. That's okay. One shot I can cope with. And then we can also go and play his banjo over his corpse. <laughs> Because then we can get AP refreshed. There's something very demonic about this, but I love it. <laughs> this banjo still has the blood of him all over it. Yeah, we're just sitting there plucking its strings. Nah, that's fun. There we go. We are now well tuned. So we get a little bit of extra AP regen for about an hour or so, which is fantastic. And ooh, our first plan for a single action revolver ivory grip. That is absolutely worthless plan to get. But hey, all plans are good early game. I guess. So let's just go ahead and uh, learn that and make sure we loot all the stashes and stuff. Now, there are some rules about this, which I should probably clarify as well. Um, using health and stuff like that is totally fine. You know, this isn't a you only live once run or anything like that. You know, we can totally use health and heal ourselves as much as we want. But there are some other things which I really want to clarify. Like, for example, I really don't want to have to necessarily restrict going online you know we can go online and have people in our party if we really want to for some of the bigger events such as scorched earth and stuff however i don't necessarily want to have to do it all the time so therefore we're going to have it primarily on private servers but that also includes having things like the survival tent that is totally fine as well you know nothing wrong with that makes perfect sense that if you're out in the wilderness you would take some shelter supplies with you a little tent or something like that so we're also going to be using the survival tent. Okay, and over here, we have got ourselves the lumber yard. Now, the lumber yard is definitely a place worth going early on. There are some ticks and stuff which you can kill for some XP. You can also get a lot of wood for crafting and building. And you can just kind of get yourself lined up to get to the wayward safely, easily from this point. And we do have some more rad stags. Okay, I don't know if we'll be able to 
get these guys safely. No, not really. Okay. You gotta be careful with Radstags. They can hit you, actually. They can do a lot of damage, Radstags, especially the bigger ones. So you gotta really be careful. But over here, we do have the Lumber Yard. Now, there are ticks here. Ticks are very nasty because they kind of burrow out from under cars and stuff like that. And they can catch you by surprise. So keep a very close eye out for them. And if we get a chance to... Oh, hello. We've got the yearling here. There we go. We'll definitely do that. Get a sneak attack on him. And his body went under the under the crane. Oh, that's no good. Oh, there's a tick right there. So, yeah. We're very unlikely... Oh, hello. We're very unlikely to sneak up on these guys because they jump out of the ground. Kind of like mole rats and stuff. But if we can get some sneak attacks on them, then we'll probably deal with them in one hit. So let's be sneaky. Okay. I can hear them scuttling around. We're in caution now, so we should be able to get sneak attacks if we hit them. Now we're hidden for definite. Oh, I hate the sound of their little pitter patter of their feet. It's nasty. I just imagine them laying their eggs in my hair and stuff. Okay. There's a tick right there. Let's be very slow here. The second we see numbers, we get a little bit of a blitz effect, like in Fallout 4. There we go, like that. Perfect. That's how you do it. And then we can do that to as many of them as possible. We get some easy XP. But one of the main reasons why you definitely want to come here early at the start of the game is this right here. There is a hunting rifle spawn right here. And I'm, that's pretty much guaranteed, I believe. That should always be there unless another player has picked it up. And that hunting rifle is going to make things much easier in the long run. It's not very powerful because it is a level 1 hunting rifle. We can use it straight away. However, hunting rifles, they require 308, and that can be quite hard to find. So we'll have to keep a close eye out for that in the early game. But you know what? We have got ourselves a hunting rifle early game. That's definitely a nice thing to have. We can deal with enemies at long range. Awesome. Oh, hello there, mate. There's another tick dead. And I think you've nibbled me a little bit there. I'd be very curious to know what like a you only live one run, run would look like in 76. Because in 76, you don't need to eat or drink anymore to maintain your AP and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, with enough knowledge and experience, you probably could do a you only live one run inside Fallout 76. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, shall we? Let's start small. So that's the lumber yard kind of cleared out. We got a few enemy kills and stuff. We grabbed some supplies as well. Just basic scrap primarily. Nothing too exciting in there. We did get some berry mentats. That could be very, very helpful actually. If there's a couple enemies around and we just don't quite know where they are. So now, let's start sneaking our way to the Wayward. We're going to go to the Wayward and the Overseer camp. So we can kind of complete those initial quests. And also, we are going to pretty much follow the exact road. We're going to follow the path here because if you go over the fields over that way, you will get to a farm which is full of scorched. And they all have ranged weapons and I am not necessarily interested in getting in a gunfight this early. However, on this side of the road we do have some bees and bees are very easy early XP. They can hurt you, but not that much, really. I mean, it's a bee, you know. Unless you're allergic, then it should be totally fine. So, let's see if we can kill some bees right here. Just wait until it says 95 on your vats. And then you can get a sneak hit in. There we go. I am so tough, I can literally kill bees with a knife. That's damn impressive, isn't it? Excellent stuff. Sneak attacks right there. Easy XP. And there is also... Some more deer over there. There's also a scavenger. Hmm. Again, I don't know if we'll be able to get the get the deer without using bullets. The last two got cornered, didn't they? But, you know, we can give it a go. Get some leather and stuff. Very important for making early armor, which we definitely want to try to do. Try to get a full set of uh, armor early, even if it's just like level one armor. And now this guy, he's a scavenger. Scavengers do have guns and stuff like that, so it might be an idea. We do have a hatchet and stuff. Is that better than my machete? It's not. Okay. It's pretty much exactly the same. We could try to use a grenade on this guy, so then we can definitely kill him, but we do have a couple rounds of ammo now. So why don't we see if we can get a sneak attack on the back of this dude's noggin so we can kill him easy. All right. So this might still take two shots. Nope. One shot dropped him. Excellent stuff. Oh, God. Okay, he didn't even have anything. Well, that's a shame. But, you know, did have some XP, so that's fantastic. Also, people watching this video, you may have realized that I haven't uploaded to YouTube in a very long time. And the reason that is because 
I was completely burned out on making YouTube content. And it's something which can happen to YouTubers when it stops being a fun hobby and just becomes kind of a grind to do. And it's something which I never want to happen again, you know. So therefore, I'm thinking I am going to only make content when I think of a really cool idea that is worth making. And I think this challenge run is definitely something that is quite cool. So therefore, I'm going to be really happy to make videos on it. But it was just to the stage where I was just making the same old videos and stuff like that. And it was boring, you know. I didn't enjoy making videos anymore because of it. So therefore... I took a long break and told myself I'd only come back with a cool idea, and this is a cool idea, so I'm pretty happy about that. But also, there was just nothing really going on in 76 for the longest time. I mean, the next kind of content update that's coming out, that's coming out in about two weeks or so. But it's been months since there's been new content, so it's been very hard to be enthusiastic about, you know, the gameplay and stuff when you've done it all so many times. But, you know, this is a nice refreshing way to play Fallout 76. It's an interesting way to play it. It's a different way to play it. So therefore, I'm actually really enjoying playing it right now. I, it's very different. It's not what I normally do, but I'm really, really enjoying it. So that's why we're doing the series. And as I said, you know, haven't done it in a long time. So therefore, if you want to support the channel, maybe go ahead and tell your friends about it if you think it's cool. And hopefully they'll come and watch the videos as well. Then we can all have fun. Superb. So we have found the Wayward. That's brilliant. We got 21 XP for that. And also we have got the Overseer Camp over here. Get a bit more XP for doing that. Okay, so let's go in and learn some of the first plans. Grab the initial junk and stuff that the Overseer very kindly left for us. And also allow us to make some weapons and armor and stuff like that. She's even left us some more ammunition. That's fantastic right there. So, let's go and talk about guns and stuff like that. Primarily... What I think the best thing to do with this game will be to start off with maybe a single shot rifleman sneak build and then slowly turn it into a commando build as we start to get more ammo and stuff like that. And also the main thing which is going to be really difficult about this game is that so much of it is tied into the legendary system. So therefore we might actually suck for the longest time but then find a really cool legendary weapon which makes us exceptionally powerful. So we've got to be on the lookout for that magical drop. And see what happens. Because otherwise it's going to be much harder until we get that. But one thing I also really want to do here. Every player should do this. Not just players doing this run. And that is mod your machete. Now this machete. As you saw it was doing okay. You know like two hitting some of the, ro the rad dags and stuff like that. But what we're going to do now is add a serrated blade to it. This adds more damage initially. And also it causes bleed damage. With that effect on there right now. It means that we can one-shot most of the low-level enemies just by backing off a little bit and letting the bleed damage do the rest of it. Makes it much safer for us in the long run. We can just hit it and then back off a little bit. So really good idea to do that. And also scrap any weapons that you find. Now, as much as I would love to use the pipe pistol, I don't think it's going to be very useful. So let's just go ahead and scrap that right there. Maybe once we actually unlock some cool mods and stuff like that. Or maybe some of the rifle stocks and stuff. We'll consider using the pipe weaponry. But for now, let's stick with that hunting rifle. Oh yes, and we also need to craft a weapon as part of the actual objective. Let's just craft a throwing knife. Just use a steel. Very easy to make. Just get the objective done. And then also, what we want to do is make some armor right here. This armor, we're probably going to use for quite a while. So, let's go and give ourselves a chest piece right there. We'll also give ourselves all of the arms. Now, these are obviously pretty terrible, these armor pieces we're making right here. Really not very good at all, but we have got a full set of leather armor ready to go. Let's go and whack that on. So right now, we are getting zero damage resistance, as you can see down there. We're getting nothing, but we go and put these on. That will slowly go up. So now we have 8 ballistic resistance and 18 energy resistance. So not very good at all. But you know what? It's much better than zero, isn't it? So that's fantastic. And now that that's done, what I think we should do next is head over to Flatwoods. We can head over to Flatwoods and do some of the objectives there. Oh, but then again, if we just go into the Wayward, we actually get a bunch of XP, don't we, for completing Wayward Souls. Yeah, let's do that first, actually. Right, in the Wayward then. So... When you enter the Wayward, obviously, they're under attack. And there's a few ways you can deal with it. You can talk him down. You can shoot him. I think we're just going to shoot him in the back of the head. Seeing as we get the sneak attack damage. And it means we don't waste any resources healing a potential gunshot wound. Has he got anything? He's got another pipe pistol. Fantastic. 
Right, so that's Wayward Souls complete right there. Really nice easy quest, you know, just go to the Wayward and talk to Duchess and start to get the next quest going and you can get some XP. I'm hoping this will actually take us up to our next level right here. Indeed it will, okay, fantastic. Such a small amount of XP, but it's worth getting excited about at this early stage. Okay, so something which I also think is really interesting about this game is that you can actually max out the perks you get as soon as you hit the level cap requirement to get those perks, which is very different to the early games. What I'm going to do first, though, I'm going to put a point into Charisma, because we'll need that later on. Not now, but later on once we hit level 4. And then what I think would be good for us is either to get another rank of Action Girl, or maybe what we should probably do is give ourselves... The ability to use vats and target heads. Concentrated fire right there. Now vats, we can actually target heads and stuff like that with guns. So that's pretty darn important. Fantastic stuff. So, now that that's done, let's head on out and head to Flatwoods for some more easy XP, hopefully. So let's creep our way over to Flatwoods. And good god, look at the god range. This game really is pretty. We've actually got some Brotherhood people over there. We actually are playing this game in April of 2021, just in case anyone's watching this in the future. So therefore, you know, the, the Brotherhood are part of this game, you know, they're here. However, I don't really regard the kind of Brotherhood DLC to be something that we need to do in this. Because right now, part two of the Broken Steel DLC still isn't out yet. So therefore, we're probably not really going to bother with the Brotherhood stuff until part two is out, which will be... Quite a while, yeah, as far as I'm aware. I forget the exact date. But when that is out, we'll probably add it to the list of things to do, so to speak. But what I do like about this game is that when they added Wastelanders, they did a really good job of kind of intertwining the original campaign and Wastelanders together. So you end up going to a lot of the same places at roughly the same time. And it's pretty cool. So, we do have some dogs down there. Now, dogs obviously are hostile. However, it would be an idea to try to avoid them. Not because I can't kill the dogs, or the dogs are too dangerous. But because there's always more than what you see. So there we go. Okay, so yeah, just hitting them and letting the bleed do the work really helps out, as you can see. And that one is just going to scurry off, is he? Come on, get back here. Okay, easy dogs right there. But as I was saying, you know, where there's two, there's normally some more around. But uh, the third one saw me. And also, if you fight the dogs, then there's a chance they can alert the mole rats, which always live around here. Which love to tunnel and dig up and charge out right in your face. So they're always lovely when you're really health conscious, aren't they? Yes, indeed. Oh, frogs. Okay, we're definitely going to need to kill some frogs. Easy XP after all. Yeet. Anything which gives us XP that isn't going to fight back. Is high priority. <laughs> so let's just go and kill those things right there. Let's go all the way around the little hotel over there. That's where the mole rats mostly spawn. There's also some rad roaches over there as well. Just try to avoid that area as best as you possibly can. And then head over this way into the town of Flatwoods. Where there's a bunch of very easy kind of tutorial quests. We might actually skip these in terms of the video. Because many players would have seen them. And there's no challenge to them. There's no fighting or anything like that. So I might actually go ahead and skip to the end of that. So that we can see what we get with all of our XP. So, see you in a second. Alright, so that's first contact completed. We have got it to Flatwoods. And we have registered as a responder. And this will give us a little bit of XP. So let's see. Is this enough? To maybe give us a level. They're giving us a lot of like, plans and stuff. There we go. Not quite enough for a level. Okay, I'll see you again when we have enough for a level. There we go. That is the mission first things first complete. The first one you do with the responders. And that got us to level 4. There's a very important perk which we have got to pick at level 4. Which is going to make things a little bit easier for us. It's not necessarily going to give us any extra abilities or anything like that. But it will definitely make things a bit easier for us in terms of the amount of damage we take. And that is, of course, if we can actually pick a perk now. Oh, we've also got a perk card pack. I don't do that for now. What I would like to do is go and get myself a rank of Lone Wanderer. Okay, so I actually need to assign this first, don't I? Uh, let's go for an agility. Because then we can max out Action Girl pretty soon. Sure. But yeah, let's go into here. Lone Wanderer. This unlocks at this level. And therefore, we get more resistance to things. And also, we don't use as much... Well, no, we actually get more AP regen. I was going to say we don't use as much AP. But no, we just get more regen. So that's a nice thing to do. 
we're obviously going to be playing by ourselves, so therefore we are going to go with this. Now, this obviously brings up an interesting debate in the game, which I'm sure some of the more experienced players are going to be mentioning. They're going to be saying, Final Render, you Titanic Superman sexy man stud, but what about the public team system? Sure, you're not actually going to be, you know, playing with people, but if you go and give yourself a public team, then you'll actually go and get some more intelligence and therefore some more XP. So why don't you just do that? Well... There's a very simple reason for that, and that is because I believe that when you make yourself a casual team, and you're the only person in it, when it maxes out, you only get one extra intelligence. Now, one extra intelligence is not that special. It's really not that great. However, that perk card means we actually get some AP regeneration, and it means we also take less, take less damage. And I think that's more important than a little bit more XP in the early game, if I'm entirely honest. Because... I don't want to die. It's a, it's a permadeath run. You know what I mean? But then again, can people confirm to me in the chat or in the uh, in the comment section, does that actually matter? Does having a public team on, if you're the only person in the public team, affect Lone Wanderer? Because if it doesn't, then yes, I will absolutely play in a public team. However, I don't think that that's actually a thing. I think that if you play in a public team, you don't get the benefits of Lone Survivor. Alright, so let's go into the responder database here and log in because we have just completed the second helpings quest right there, which gives us some of that and also completes the quest. There we go. We've got a few very early quests done right there. Oh, be quiet, Delbert Winters. He's yelling on the radio again. Okay, shots up now, finally. Okay, so we got ourselves a lot of the workbenches unlocked by doing those early tutorial missions and a big bunch of XP. Very nice amount of XP right there. In fact, we are now level 5. So this is absolutely fantastic. There is another very vital perk, which we are going to be picking at level 5. But also, I didn't open my perk card pack last level. I really should have had that. So let's see what we've got. By the look of it, we've got an endurance card. we got Slugger, Lead Belly, Dead Man Sprinting, and Through Hiker. And the joke is, they say spelling is a lost urt. Oh, they really need some more jokes, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even funny in a bad way. All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I am probably going to leave the point for now. Let's assign Lead Belly. What I would definitely like to do now is get myself a special one in luck right there. But what do I actually want? I'll probably get another point of agility in terms of my actual level. So we can sneak a bit better. But let's go and give ourselves Serendipity. Serendipity is a vital perk for a build like this. Whilst below 30% health, gain a 50% chance to avoid damage. No power armor. So this could really save my skin when I'm low level. Whilst it's true I don't plan to ever be low level, if I do go low level, I will be very, very thankful that that is in there. Serendipity, everyone. Absolutely fantastic. So, we're starting to get an interesting build now, you know, we're starting to actually kind of focus on keeping our AP up and also taking less damage. We've got more perks to pick once we actually start to flesh this out. And Lead Belly right there was just given to us, so we might as well use it, right? You know, seeing as it's free and we can use it. However, I doubt we'll use Slugger. We might do, actually, seeing as we've got a machete. But then again, I think Slugger is... that's two-handed, I believe, isn't it? Yes, that's two-handed, so that's actually not very good for us anyway. Okay, people. So... This has been me, kind of getting started inside Fallout 76 on the very first episode of our permadeath run, people. So if you actually look at our health bar, we've actually done pretty darn good in terms of taking damage. We've got a little bit of rads, but that's just from completing the quest where we had to go and grab the water from the river. But we've done very well indeed. We've got to level 5 in the first video, and we've got a nice amount of resources and stuff to kind of get ready. We've got a full set of armor, that's pretty sweet. And we have got to go and do some more difficult missions going forward. What I think we'll do, what I think we'll do is maybe do some of the stuff for the wayward. What we need to do is go and deal with some raiders who are up over here in this part of the map, which will be a bit of a long journey. However, we don't necessarily have to kill them in order to complete those missions. So therefore, that'll be a good thing to do to get some early XP. There's also a bunch of markers we can get along the way. So... With that being said, people, thank you very much for watching this first video, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next part. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, gang. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you to all of our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Special thank you to our Level 3 YouTube members, which currently consists of Psycho Girl, Katrina McKenna, and Raven's Roost.